Kung tatanungin niyo ang mga Kristiyano, kung ano ang pinaka mahalagang special na araw sa Kristiyanismo, they would probably say it's Easter and Christmas. Dalawang paboritong time of the year sa maraming mana ng parataya. But nakakulong ko to, if you will ask them why do they celebrate Easter or Christmas, <clears throat> chances are they could not give you an intelligent response. Lalo kung mga tao na hindi manang parataya ang kakausapin nyo at tatanungin, what is Easter, what is Christmas, they would probably so many confusion patungkol sa bagay na ito. Naway ang biyaya ng Diyos at ang kanyang kapayapaan ay sumayin nyo sa ngalan na ating Panginoong So Kristo at sa pagtalakay natin ngayong oras na ito tukul sa Holy Friday marami na tayo nadinig tungkol sa kanyang ginawang sakripisyo at dapat lagi maintindihan ng mga tao lalo na ng buong sanglibutan na kung hindi namatay si Kristo sa krus na kalbaryo wala na tayong pag-asa at higit sa lahat kung hindi siya nabuhay na mugli walang magagawa ang ating panamprataya salamat na lang sa Diyos si Kristo po na Diyos na katawang tao na matay sa kalbaryo para bayar na ating mga kasalanan inilibing And three days after, he rose from the grave. Victoriously. That's why ang ating panampalataya ay hindi walang kabuluhan. Sa pagkatakating sinampalatayanan na Diyos ay muling nabuhay mula sa mga patay. Pero ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng Easter? Ano kinalaman ito sa Easter egg? Or Easter bunny? Na maraming nagsa-celebrate using these items. Well, while to many, it's sort of a strange practice, but uh, kailangan magbigyan pa di natin ng celebration ng Easter o ng on Holy Week o yung Passion ay napaka-importante sapagat walang kanalaman ng Easter Egg or Easter Bunny. At maraming mga tao na they would just go with the flow dahil yun ang popular and uh, not all popular are doing right. And some of them are hindi nga alam kung ano ginagawa. Sa Sunday, it's going to be Pasko ng pagkabuhay. And uh, inaalala natin ito but during that, that time na si Kristo ay pumapasok ang mga tao ay may mga palaspas It's called the triumphal entry ng Panginoon and they thought itatatag na ni Kristo ang kanyang kaharian and he was so popular of course for the right reason. Sa Palm Sunday uh, would have just suggested that in a few days no, no, no panong yun yung kanyang popularidad he was so famous Imposible yung sabihin mo na yung kanya kasikatan ay babagsak kagad yung rating si Kanga. Pagka sinabi mong bababa ang rating ni Kristo noon during that time, you would be considered as sort of a crazy. Pero alam nyo, sa totoo lang ho, those same people who shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Are the very same people who shouted, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! They would rather have Barabbas to be released for them kaysa kay Kristo na tagapagligtas. At ang ating pagtalakay ngayon ay nasa Mark chapter 15. You will follow me sa verse 25. And it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. Yun ang kanyang krimin. He claimed to be the king of the Jews. Well, he rightly said. But ayaw nilang paniwalaan. And with him, they crucified two thieves, the one on the right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Siya nilagay sa gitna, 
Sapagkat siya ang lumalabas sa pinakamalaking kasalanan at yung dalawas magkabila. Yun ang pananaw nila, but may nagring ng Diyos sa lagay maalagay sa gitna upang marinig lang dalawa nung magnanakaw ang mensahe ni Kristo. Sapagkat si Kristo is no respecter of person, wala siyang pinapaburan. Wala siyang kinakampihan, kundi lahat pantay-pantay niya pina, pina, minamahal at pinapahalagahan. And itong pinasa natin sa Mark 15, deals with what I would focus sa ating pag-aaral. It, uh, notice yung, he was crucified and the scribes and the others said, tungkol sa kanya, lalo sa verse 31, he saved others, himself he cannot save. So let Christ the King para sa kanila, King of Israel, descend now from the cross. Buwaba ka dyan, wika niya. Nila, kung ikay talagang tagapagligtas, iligtas mo itong dalawang to, iligtas mo pati sarili mo. Yun din ang sigaw, sigaw nung dalawang magnanakaw nung una. So, iligtas mo sarili mo that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him, revived him. Yung unang bukso ng kanyang pagkapako sa kanilang tatlo roon ay combo yung, yung dalawa na kumukupasala sa ginawa ni Christ, sa, sa Panginoong Isus na kapako. But again, mga kapatid, notice the words. He saved others, and yet, sabi pa nila, himself he cannot save, but they were wrong. Alam niyo kung bakit? He could have saved himself. Ang dali-dali niya iligtas ang kanyang sarili. Napakadali, napakadali. Walang kahirap-hirap. Pero alam niyo, he decided to pass through that pain. He decided to pass through that uh, torture. He decided to die so that you and I might live. Mas minagaling ng Panginoong Diyos ang magdusa so that I say ang mamatay na literal. Dahil sa makasalanan ng mga tao, tayo mga makasalanan na dapat mamatay lahat sa impyerno, iminahal ng Diyos, siya na walang kamatayan, ay nakaranas na kamatayan. Upang tayo na may kamatayan dapat sa impyerno, walang hanggan, ay magkaroon ng pag-asang, magkaroon ng buhay. Kung sasamparatera lang naman natin siya. He could have saved himself. But if he had saved himself, mga kaibigan, hindi niya kayo maililigtas. Hindi niya tayo maililigtas. Kung inuna niya iligtas ang kanyang sarili, in the first place, bakit pa siya baba? Kung ililigtas din pala niya sarili niya. Mga kaibigan, he was the only one who was born to die. The, the, first, the very first day he was born, nakaabang na ang kamatayan sa kanya. Diyos sa, sa manger, sa sabsabon ng kusya si pinanganak, madali mang paligid, liwanag lang ng, ng star ang nandoon, pero sa likod noon ay may anino at ang anini tila nakakorting cross. Na yung batang iyon, na napakaganda, babango, ang kanyang magandang ulo ay nakalaang lagusan ng koron ng tinik. kay mga paa at kamay ay nakalang lagusan ng mga pako. Ang kayang buong katawan ay nakalang wasakin, drugin at gulpihin ng mga tao na kanyang minahal. He could have saved himself pero hindi niya ginawa para mailigtas niya tayo. Para tayo mga kristyano ang katas natin mailigtas ng Panginoon sa impyerno, humayo at bahagi ang mabuting balita sa iba at yung mga nakikinig sa akin, hindi pa mara ng parotay, hindi nyo pa alam ang katiyakan ng inyong buhay na walang hanggan. Hindi nyo pa alam kung sa kayo pupunta upang kayo. Hindi siya nagdesisyong iligtas sa kanyang sarili upang ikaw ay magdesisyong magsisi ng kasalanan at sumamparataya sa kanya. Jesus completely ignored the law of self-preservation para sa kanyang sarili so that he could save you and me. Meron isang makaibigan na nasa kagubatan Babalta nila mayroong nakakawalarong napakabangis na na oso at uh, that that night na naramdaman nung isa tila ayan ay oso kinis niya kay kaibigan na walang walang pakialam sa mga tumuyo ka diyan diyan ay oso nakakakain sa atin lalapa sa atin bilis mo tumuyo ka diyan sa mga hindi ano wala tas ano ginagawa mo sabi niya isa aba nag nagrarubber shoes ah sabi niya nakaiga printing printing siya sabi niya kahit nakarubber shoes ka hindi mo kayang matakasan ang bear na kakain sa atin kung sakali. Hindi naman yun eh. Kaya ako nagra-rubber shoes, sinusuguro ko sa'yo, mas mabilis ako tumakbo sa'yo. 
Alam nyo, all people would desire to save themselves. Inililigtas na sarili lang, alam nyo na, para hindi sila mapahama, para hindi sila masisi, they would try to eliminate themselves sa mga lugar ng nakapahamakan, which is just normal. Pero si Kristo, He went through that pain. He went through the cross. Hindi niya nilaga ng bala, hindi niya nilaga na naman. Sinalo niya lahat. Ang paglagos ng pako, pahirap ng mga tao, ang pagsira ng kanyang likod, ang pagwasak ng kanyang buong pamumukha. Sabi nga ng Bible, hindi mo makikita ang tao na nakapako sa krus. Alam niya, he could have saved himself. Pero again, hindi niya ginawa upang tayo ay kanya mailigtas. Alam niya, pwede naman siyang mag-decide. Kung tutuusin siya na, sa usapang tao, pwede naman niya ilayo yung sarili niya at uh, hindi na magdusa ng tap napakatindi, napakagrabe. Walang naka, wala pang mas matinding parusa na inabot ang tao, sino mang tao, na nakahigit sa parusa ng inabot ni Kristo. Wala. Sukdulan. That's the, that's the extreme pain and punishment. Wala. Pero alam niya, tiniis niya. Pwede naman niyang gawing ilayo ang kanyang sarili sa kapahamakan by not going to Jerusalem. Actually, by staying in Galilee. Pwede rin siya mag-stay doon sana eh. Kaya lang, eh wala eh. May nagiling niya na ipakita sa atin ang pagmamahal niya. Hindi na, hindi ka na kailangan magpunta ron eh. Wika ng mga, mga alagad kung baga, yung angels might have been saying, Lord, hindi ka na kailangan pumunta ron. Kami na ang bahala. Kami na ang mag-execute. Pero hindi ho. He could have stayed in Galilee. Para iligtas na kayong sarili. Pero hindi yun. Eh kayo ba naman? Halimbawa lang. Nabalitaan yung sa uh, Quezon City. Sa isang barangay doon. Tiyak na tiyak na pag nagpunta ka ron, doon ka matitigok. Halimbawa lang. Doon sa lugar niyan, ikaw eh. Siguradong siguradong pag nagtungo ka ron, anytime, you will die. Abay, isang taong matinong pag-iisip. Eh bakit pupunta ka pa ron? Eh alam mo mamatay ka. You could have stayed in Bulacan. Iwasan mo yun. Pero si Kristo po, he's not crazy. But he, he is the loving God. Na dumating tag ng panahon, nakalaan siya sa ganong pagkakataon and that right time came at hindi siya pumalag. The Lord so omniscient. He knew na siya mamamatay sa Jerusalem. He, he went there para mamatay at magdusa para sa ating kasalanan. Hindi sa kasalanan niya. He could have stayed in Galilee. Alam niyo? Bakit, may, bakit ano, meron sa Galilee? Alam sa Galilee, ito sa place of miracle. Galilee was very good to him. Napaka-friendly ng Galilee sa kanya. And you know why? Dahil ang dami yung ginamang magagandang bagay doon. Na-appreciate ng mga taga-Galilee ang ginawa ng Panginoon Jesus. It was in Galilee that he preached the famous sermon known as the Sermon on the Mount. Doon sa Galilee, he, he fed the 5,000 plus the another 5,000 at umabot sa mga 20,000 more or less. And they wanted him to be the king during that time. Pinakakain niya mga tao. Inaasikaso. It was in Galilee that he walked on the water. It was in Galilee that he stilled the storm and caused the wave to come down. Ang dami magagandang bagay nangyari sa Galilee. He could have stayed in Galilee. Pero alam niyo, Except na iligtas niya sarili niya by staying in Galilee, no, nagpunta pa rin siya sa Jerusalem. Galilee was a place of miracle. Secondly, Galilee was a place of ministry. Marami siyang pwedeng dahilan, marami siyang pwedeng maging alibay para magstay siya ron. At sabi niya, Ama, mayroon akong trabaho dito. No, being, being a good leader, he is just a good follower na, ng utos ng Ama. There was plenty of work na inaiwanan niya sa Galilee kung tutusin sa usapan tao. Maraming pang trabaho na he, could have, he, could, he should have done sa kanila. Not all of the sick has been healed. Maraming pang tao ang kailangan gumaling. Maraming pang mga tao ang kailangan pang pakainin. Maraming pang mga magsalan ang kailangan pang mapatawad sa Galilee. Pero alam niyo, minagaling niya pumunta na sa Jerusalem because it's just the right time. Dumating na tatang panahon. Ang dali niya sana mag-stay doon sa Galilee. Wala siyang pwedeng uh, pagsulitan pero alam nyo meron ama sa langit marahin siyang gagawin doon but he had to go to Jerusalem things have been 
doing well in Galilee. His life was not in danger in Galilee. Pero yung sabi ng Bible, he set his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem. Yun ang tunay na halimbawa ng lalaki. Diretso siya sa kanyang pananaw. Meron siyang dapat matapos and he had to accomplish it. He set his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem, desiring to be obedient to the will of the Father ng Ama sa Langit. He made his way to the Holy City. Alam niyo, he could have saved himself by staying in Galilee and not going to Jerusalem. But alam niyo, he was ready for our acquittal. He is preparing for the process of our acquittal. That's why pwede siyang tumakas, pero hindi niya ginawa. Also by escaping from the Garden of Gethsemane. At doon siya sa Garden of Gethsemane, alam niyo, darating ang mga dadakip sa kanya, kasama si Judas na nagtraidor sa kanya, pinagpalit siya sa halaga lamang ng baboy, na mukhang pera, pero niyo, hindi niya inintindi yun. He, he was willing to face his enemies. Ang dami niyang kaaway. He, he, could have, he could have pulled off the most and greatest escape dinig pa sana niya si Houdini. He could have done something more than what Houdini did during his younger days. Pero alam niyo, mas mainam ang ginawa niya na natili siya ron. Hindi siya tumakas. In fact, nung dumalapit si Judas sa kanya, bago pa dumating si Lumapit si Judas, sabi ng mga mga Roman soldiers, he was he was popular by because they, they knew, they heard the name. Pero hindi siya kagaya ngayon na popular ka, kita mukha mo all over internet, etc. and social media. Pero kilala siya, sikat siya yung pangalan niya. Pero hindi nila alam ay tsura ni Cristo because he was just like an ordinary person. So sabi ng mga, mga sandalo, ituro mo sa amin kung sino sa kanila, si Jesus. Ang sabi ni Judas, kaya nga nausin yung sabi ng halip ni Judas, kung sino aking haggan, yun ang dakpin niyo. And so, nung dumating, dumating si Judas sa kanya, at ang tawag ng Panginoong Hesus sa kanya, saan ka nang galing, kaibigan? Hindi niya tirong nakaaway si Judas. Although he gave him the opportunity to be one of his children, he became part of the ministry, but he is not saved. Patunay lang na hindi ko miyembro ka ng isang tamang reliyon, isang pat na para mapunta ka sa langit. No, it's not by membership, folks. It's not by doing good works. It's not by baptism para kayo maging makarating sa langit. Kahit ikaw pinasa tamang church na. Ang paraan para mapunta ka sa langit is ang parate mo si Kristo bilang Diyos na nagkatawan tao. Papasok mo sa siyang puso bilang iyong Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Magsisi ka ng kasalanan. Alam niyo? Sa Gethsemane, Pinili niya sanang tumakas, pero alam niyo, sinulubong niya. Hinarap niya ang kanyang mga uh, mandarakip. Katunayan, nagmamayabang pa nga si Peter, naputol pa nga yung tenga ng isa. Natatakot siya siguro dahil puputol siguro yung leg, pero naputol tenga. Sabi nga ni Kristo isa, nabubuhay sa tabak, sa tabak ni mamamatay. Ibinilik ni Kristo ang tenga. Ganun kadali. So, the way of escape was there. Ando na ang pwedeng pagkakatong tumakas na siya. Galilee is a place to, of escape. You can get somebody is a place of, of, of escape, pero hindi niya ginawa. Even while he was in Jerusalem, he could have saved himself by escaping from the Garden of Gethsemane. Alam niyo, in Galilee, of course, doon siya ko, but in that day, walang street lights, walang neon lights, walang mga mag- malalakas na ilaw. Alam niyo, pwede siya makatago doon sa mga siit-siit na mga kahoy, del madilim. He could have carefully hid himself and tumunta doon sa kabilang panic at hindi siya mahuli. The way we skip was there. But the warning was there. Hindi siya tumakas, still under an warning. Alam nyo, he had adequate time. He had adequate warning. Napaparating na ang mga kalaban. In fact, nakikita na niya yung sulo. Marahil papunta na, malapit na pwede siya tumakbo. He knew the soldiers were coming. He could have seen their lights, torches. Pero alam nyo, he would rather face them. He's man enough to face because he's that courageous. Magandang halimbawa si Kristo. Hindi siya duwag. Hindi siya mahina loob humarap sa dapat niyang harapin. Hindi siya flimsy na mahina ang loob. Buo loob niyang harapin ang dapat niyang hinaharap. At tama ang pag-iisip. Pero alam niya, uh, 
Pakita ko sa inyo, hindi naman kaagad na pinakita ni Kristo ang kanyang pagharap sa mga dadampot sa kanya. In fact, I will give you some verses na dahil hindi pa dumarating ang takdang panahon, there were so many attempts na siya damputin at patayin na kagad. Pero alam nyo, with this wisdom, minagaling ng Diyos na hindi pa siya kagad magpadampot ng mga paraon, mga naunang panahon, naunang mga araw. In the past, he had to stay out of certain areas dahil alam niyang alam papatayin siya. Alam niyang papatayin siya. Alam niyang ibibigay ang buhay niya. Pero kailangan sa timing at sa paraan at sa oras, takdang giligay ng Diyos. Hindi sa takda ng tao. Parang ganito yan eh. Hanggang di mo pa oras, di ka mamatay. Pero huwag mo hinahanap ang kamatayan. Hanggang di pa oras, di ka mamatay. As long as you are doing what the will of God is. Pero alam niyo, John, yung turang sarado ko sa inyo, he wanted, they wanted him to be killed. John 7.1 Kasi hindi pa panahon, sabi ng Bible, John 7.1 After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Luke 4.28 And following, And all they in the synagogue when they heard these things were filled with wrath. Nagalit sila, napuot sila sa mga nadirig ng pangangaral ni Kristo and rose up and thrust him out of the city. Dinampot siya at gusto siyang kunin at ilaglag ng pa, pa, patiwarik and led him into the bro of the hill whereon they, their, their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. Gusto na puti si Kristo, una ang paa hawak sa, at ibabagsak una ulo. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. Hindi pa panahon na si Madampot. Ito pa, John 8.59. Then look they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. There was a time na hindi pa kailangan niyang maroon sa kamatayan. Hindi siya ganun na wala sa, wala sa hulog ang pag-iisip. Lahat ay may, may timing. So Jesus had escaped many times before. Because it was not yet time for him to die. But there came the time that he is to give himself. So he was preparing for our acquittal. Secondly, he was preparing to give us assurance. Assurance, na yung gagawin niya, will be the best for us. Pwede naman niya sabihin, at mag-plead siya ng not guilty. Dahil wala naman siya kasalanan. Wala siya ginawa mali. He could have plead not guilty before Pilate. But alam nyo, hindi niya ginawa. Because he wanted to give us the assurance that I will make it to finish, to fulfill. So men have hired the best lawyers so that they could, you know, afford to escape. May mga tao na nagkasala na pero babayad ng mga abogado para sila ay pagsinungalingan, ipagsinungaling at sabihin hindi siya nagkasala at makatakas sa parusa ng mga judge, mahukom. But alam nyo, he did not need the lawyer to escape. He did not need somebody to defend him, to escape injustice. Na babagsak sa kanya anytime. He could have saved himself. Pero alam nyo, hindi niya ginawa yun. Again, to save you and to save me. Ito niya yung attitude ni Pilate. Jesus could have saved himself when he was in Pilate's judgment. Doon sa hall ni, ni Pilato. Andun ang kapangirihan na siya mapatawad at hindi mapa ako sa krus. So it's obvious that Pilate thought so many things about him. He heard so many things about him. Pero alam nyo, si Pilato mismo may sabi, I find no fault in him. That is already enough para hindi siya kasuhan at parusahan ng kamatayan sa krus. I find no fault in him. Kaya nagugus siya na kamay. Iba na kay Herodes. I believe that Pilate really wanted to release the Lord Jesus Christ. Kung si Kristo man lang sana ay eh, nagpasakop at nanikluhod kay Pilato. Pero alam nyo, anytime he's ready to die. And anytime you go to a court sa mga hukom nung panong iyon and you are declared not guilty, no fault, malayo-malaya ka. Pero alam nyo, hindi siya naman tala yun. Sapagat meron siyang misyon he set his eyes face steadfastly toward Jerusalem. And hindi lang yung attitude ni Pilate, ito yung action ni Cristo. He, he could have pled this case again. He had nothing wrong. Sabi ni Pilato, wala, wala nang nakasumpo ang kasalanan sa kanya. He had done nothing 
anything amiss, he had done any any wrongdoing, napakabuti niya, namuhay, napakaayos ng kanyang pagkatao, napakaayos ng kanyang disposition, na wala siyang ginawa, that is worthy of crucifixion, na sobrang higpit na parusa sa mga tao, pero yung sabihin kay Pilato, ng mata sa mata, Pilate, you know me. Pwede sa tumingin ng mata sa mata kahit sa sino, kahit kanino. You know me. Pilate, you know me. Alam mo, wala akong salanan. Pwede yung gawin yan. Pwede sabihin sa kahit na sinong tao during that time, even today, yung mga taong malinis ang konsensya, you could look them straight in the eye at sabi ni Christ, isa doon sa mga tao, marahil, uh, I'm the one who told them to go to to go to go second mile. Ang batas ninyo, one mile, papasanin ng tao, sino mang peasant, ang lahat ng pasanin ng mga Roman soldiers, papasanin, iwan ang business nila, batas na papasanin isang isang milya but I was the one who told them to walk two miles nikitang ko pa ang pagpaparangal sa batas ninyo para pasanin ang bakpak ng mga sundalo yun nire-require ng batas ninyo sinobrahan ko pa alam nyo I am the one who discourage people na magkaroon ng revolution by the sword Kung tutusin, kaya kung magkaroon ng kudita rito, kaya mag-revolusyon, mag, uh, magkaroon ng, ng my government, establish my own. Pero hindi ko ginawa. Pwede sabihin kay Pilate, during that time, I'm the one who told them to turn the other chick pag sinampal yung kabila. I was the one who told them. Pag binigay, sinampal ka sa kabila, ibigay yung pati kanan. Hindi ko sinabi sila mag sa inyo. I am the one who could have, he could have told that to Pilate. I'm the one who told them na hindi lang 7 times 7 ang kapatawaran. I told them to forgive 70 times 7. I'm the one who told them to have meekness and understanding and peace in their lives. Pwede niyo may sabihin niyo kay Pilato, pero hindi niyo ginawa. Not a word tulad ng, ng tupa na dadala sa katayan. Jesus spoke not a word in his own defense and in doing so, he was fulfilling the Bible. 53 verse 7 ng Isaiah. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb into the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth, openeth not his mouth. He could have saved himself. Pero hindi niya ginawa. Para iligtas tayo. He could have plead his case. Pero hindi niya ginawa. He was willing to pass through the pain, to give us assurance, to give us our acquittal. And number three, to teach us accountability. When he stood before the crowd, nililiti siya. He could have reminded them, lahat sila, lahat sila mga tao. Nung papasok niya sa Jerusalem, the Lord was the greatest orator, mga kapatid. And he was, he, he was the one the only one who could have spoken that kind of words na would, would draw crowd. Nagyagis nga ang buong mundo nun. The, the known world during that time sa ginagawa ni Kristo. The, the, the change their ways and their thinking dahil kay Kristo. He could have reminded them. Sabi niya, pwede niya sabihin, just one week ago, as I entered the Jerusalem, and they thought, I am the greatest individual who walked on the planet. They thought I was going to establish my kingdom. And you all were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hindi niya sinabi. He could have said, have you forgotten? Ang dali niya nakalimot. Pwede sabihin, napakadali niyong makalimutan. Have you forgotten all the things that I have done? Pwede niya paalala sa mga sinamang tao ron of his miracles. Pwede niya sabihin sa kanila, pamukha sa kanila, the, the, the greatest of leaders have always stood on their accomplishments. Ang dami ko nagawa sa inyo. Alin dito, binabalik niyo sa akin, wika niya. It would have been so easy para kay Kristo to stand there and say, Di ba Bartimaeus, ikaw? Ikaw Bartimaeus? Have you forgotten what I did for you? You were blind? Pero nakakita ka ngayon, hinawakan ko yung mga mata. At hindi nakakita. Ikaw, ikaw dyan sa likod. Pwede niya sabihin niya mga kaibigan. Ikaw na di makalakad for many years. Pero pinalakad kita. Ikaw na bulag, nakakita ka. Ikaw na, ikaw na may patay na anak, binuhay ko. Ikaw na nagugutom, hindi ko may kapansanan. Ikaw na may suliranin. I help 
all of you. He could have reminded them. Pwede sabihin, ang dali niyo makalimot. Just one week ago, you are you are praising me. Now, you are shouting at me. At gusto niyo ko ipako sa krus. Pwede niya ipamukha, lalo sa sampung may ketong. Iba pinagaling ko kayo lahat. Tapos, isa lang sa inyo nagbalik. Hindi mo lang pasalamat. Pwede niya ipamukha sa lahat yung ginawa niya, mga, kaip- mga kaibigan. Pero alam niyo, hindi. Hindi niya ginawa. He deserved all the thanks and the praises, pero hindi niya ginawa. O, hindi niya pinamukha sa kanila. He could have said, I'll tell you what, take away the cross, I will establish my kingdom. I will put crown on my head and I will rule over this land. Pwede sabihin yan. I will take all the disease. I'll take all the poverty, all the all the pain. I, I'll make sure everybody had plenty of food and lahat ng pangailangan niya. Pero yan, hindi niya ginawa. Hindi niya nilis ang cross. Because yun ang talang sinadya niya. Ang daanan ng cross ng Kalbaryo, bakit? Kasi hindi ating kayang daanan. Bakit kailangan ang cross? Because it's the only payment for our sin. He did not say that. Bakit? Pag tinakasan niya ang cross, pag tinakasan niya ang parusa, pag tinakasan niya ang magdusa sa kalbaryo, hindi niya tayo maililigtas. There's no other way. There's no other way. But the way of death. The way of Via Dolorosa. He could have saved himself. Nang maraming maraming beses, he could have declared how powerful he is. Pero alam niyo, hindi niya ginawa yan. Just to save you and me. There's no greater love than the love he showed to us. Sabi ng Bible, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Tinda, tindara, idur natin siya. We disrespected him. We did all the evil things we, the mind could conceive. At yung nagtraido sa kanya, tinawag pa rin niya kaibigan. Kanya because of, because of that, nagdusa sa kalbaryo. He could have escaped, pero hindi niya ginawa para iligtas tayo. And then, ang tayo makakalala kay Kristo, nalaman natin ang parang kaligtasan, and He already saved us. Now, what should you do? What we should do now, bilang mga Kristiyano, habang naghihintay tayo sa kanyang pagbabalik, di ba, pag makain ka sa restaurant, may mga waiter, di, nagwa-wait sila. While they are waiting, the waiters are waiting. Ano ginagawa ng mga waiters? They serve. Iniligtas nga ng Panginoong Jesus. He already saved us, mga Kristiyano. Now, you and I should serve Him. May God help us and give you peace. Sa panahon ito ng patinding krisis at napakahirap ng buhay, may God decide kung pwede lang. Napunta na tayo rito, kunin na tayo lahat at tapusin na pagdurusa. At kung hindi pa niya gagawin yan, siya pa rin ang maluwalhati. Siya pa rin ang makapangilang magde-decide. While we are waiting, church, serve Him. Maraming salamat po. Until next time. God bless us all.